Welcome to day number five. Before we get on with it, as usual, shall we see where we're up to? So let's see what we got then. Now I'm taking this wall down. Casual tips for not wearing gloves, so I've had that for most of the day. And I did that cleaning up. So first task today will be get rid of the temporary toilet. So that'll be it until the new toilet goes in. We won't have a toilet in here, we'll be back to one toilet. Then I need to get this floor chiseled up and then start looking at fitting this concealed system and toilet frame. So, as you can see, very much full of enthusiasm. So let's get on with it. So first job, remove our temporary water supply to our temporary toilet. Now when it came to removing these bolts, they were absolutely sea solid and rusty. I even tried WD-40 to get them out, but I couldn't. Uh, they just rounded the heads off the bolts. So I had to revert to breaking them out with my little chisel. Now the best thing to do here is make sure you take all the water out of the pan before you do this, because it can break the P-trap and flood water everywhere but I didn't bother doing that I just broke it out so that's the toilet out finally just need to remove this overflow and chuck this in the skip now it's time to break out these tiles where the framework's going for this concealed system because I need to get to a solid floor. Now luckily enough for me, this was only um, raised with sand and cement. They could have used concrete here and made it a lot worse for me. But it was just bedded on sand and cement which broke up very, very easily as you can see here. Now this is the last bit I want to take up of this floor. I don't want to take it all up because I still want to walk on this floor and I put the toilet back in later. Now one of the things I did find out while I was doing this is the stud wall is built onto this raised bit of flooring. So I had to be quite careful when I was chiseling it out round here that I didn't take any of the flooring up from under the wall because the wall would probably fall down. It's time now to grind out this wall so I can sink these central heating pipes into it. Now, as you can see, I've got my hoover going to try and suck up the dust. I should really be wearing the dust mask when I'm doing this, but I didn't. 
and we should be in a well ventilated area. And considering I broke the window latch on day one and I can't open the window, it didn't end up a very well ventilated area, as you can see. I'm vanishing quite quickly. Now then, why did we go for a concealed cistern and an off the floor toilet? Well, basically this is our en suite and this is our toilet. So we have a concealed cistern with an off the floor toilet and it's something me and my wife both really like. But there are pros and cons for having a concealed cistern. Now let's have a look at the pros first. So for us, it was about boxing the pipes in and you didn't see them. So I got a box in the soil pipe and I got a box in the central heating pipes what feed through for the spare bedroom, the hallway and the bathroom itself. And I didn't want little bits of boxing in. So for me, that was the main reason why we wanted a concealed system because I could build a box all the way around. Also, they look great. That's a good pro because they look really good. And another good pro is they're quite hygienic, or they're more hygienic than the standard toilet. Especially where Will's is. <laughs> anyway, cons for them are, one is they're a lot more expensive because there's a lot more work goes into building them. Another con is, this is where you have to do any repairs through here. So if you want to replace your toilet siphon, if you want to replace your uh, or float valve or your uh, float operator valve, it has to be done through this little gap here. So that's a big uh, con for them. Now this toilet clicks when you sit on it. I don't know if you can hear it, which winds me up. And hopefully when I install our toilet, it doesn't click when you get on and off it. It's basically the pressure being put down from the pan onto the tiles. So hopefully I'm gonna stop that. So that's basically the main reasons why we went for a concealed system. So I can box the pipes in and it looks good. Well, I think it looks good anyway. What do you think of concealed systems? Do you like them or do you not like them? Put in the comments down below and tell me if you do or you don't. Now the dust has cleared from the grinding, it's now time to install this concealed WC system. So that's the frame in place. I've just got to level it up a little bit. Other than that, I'll show you what we've done. Now you can see the frame's in place now. So basically it's held against the wall with these two bolts at the back here. And also, this is where the toilet fixes onto through these two bolts here, which then go through to the wall and fix in the wall. Now you've two different sizes which are 180 and 230. So you need to measure your toilet to see what you've got. And we've got a 180 one. So there's some bungs what come here and here to stop the smells and getting dirt in. And then there's a plate what goes on here, which I've got to put on in a minute, which sticks through so you can put your plasterboard and all your board on it. I'm going to put ply on the front of this to give it some more strength. So when your toilet fixes on, it's just held on with these two bolts and it's the force, downward force. So uh, you're going to have to have uh, some force to bend that and uh, bend the toilet. So you've got to make sure, you can't really put it on plasterboard, you need to put it on ply. And one of the key measurements is this meter mark here. So it needs to be a meter from that mark there down to the finished floor level. That's our finished floor level where the wood is. So that's how you set your height for your toilet so you're not too high or too low when you come to sit on it. So that's the actual frame in place. All I've got to do now is stud all this out here now to make the boxing in.
So even though this is the first piece of wood I'm actually fixing to the wall, what I had to do first was get a piece of wood on top of the frame and level across to the back wall. For this piece of wood, so even though this is the first piece I'm installing, I did quite a bit of measuring first before I actually got to this stage. I also had to work out where this side of the bath was going to go because that would determine how actual long this boxing in was going to be. So that's my first piece in, levelled and straight. So this piece I'm putting in now is just going to be holding up plasterboard. And I didn't need to go all the way down to the floor with this one, just down to the soil pipe. So what I'm doing here is just making sure this piece is straight so I can get the right height for this piece of wood. This little noggin here is just to give extra strength to the piece of wood which is securing everything on this corner. And this piece of wood is just actually securing the two pieces of wood together. So the one that's secured to the wall is going to secure the one at the front. And again, it's massively important that this wood is all straight and plumb, because otherwise you're going to get a wonky toilet. Oh, yeah. Now that's the end of day five. Let's see where we're up to. So the cupboard, or the boxing in, is virtually done. Just need to get some ply from the front. Now, my wife told me today she wants this tile up and running tomorrow, or we'll never do get back onto this job. So I'm gonna put a piece of ply over the front and then put another piece of ply on to uh, pretend it's the tile so I can kind of put the toilet on. So uh, still need to get the cold water connected to it though. So this is only temp put on so I can get out the water connection because it's on the top. So not a bad five days work, all of me Jack Joan. 
and a bit rusty and a bit stiff. But uh, yeah, that's where we're up to. So I hope you've liked the videos and I'll catch you on day six. Cheers, guys.